Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Wednesday, March 2nd. Michael Boutros here with you this morning. Great to be here with you guys. We just got the release of the ADP employment change coming in at 214,000. That came about 15 minutes ago. Stronger than expected, okay? We were looking for a print of 190. Comes off a previous read of 205. If you note that 205 print from last month just got downwardly revised to 193. And... Um, so it's going to be a mixed print, right? You shaved off some from last month, a little bit stronger than uh, expected this month. Keep in mind, ADP employment is specific to private sector payrolls. And certainly tomorrow or Friday is rather non-farm payroll print is going to be a much more larger encompassing payroll uh, figures number. So a lot of people tend to lean on this as sort of a precursor to what's going to happen on Friday. I can tell you from my personal studies, guys, that ADP does tend to move in line with non-farm payrolls, largely speaking. Uh, the one caveat I found looking over the years is that ADP is notorious for missing larger swings in the in the broader NFP number. So that's to say uh, they will largely move together, but when you usually get a major print on the ADP that's much stronger or much weaker than expected, typically that's masked here in the private sector payroll. So precursor or not does seem to be a decent print. Dollars trading heavier uh, across most of the, its major counterparts. Here's what we look like so far in this session. Biggest gainer so far is the Aussie dollar up 0.67%. Sterling continuing its nice little rebound here up 0.47. Lackluster on the rest of the board. Uh, Euro continuing to sit at the yearly open. We'll talk about that. Swissy continuing to hold that weekly opening range. I love this trade. I do think you get a very nice definitive break here near term. Uh, Japanese yen down 0.26 and Looney Worst performer on the session down is 0.4%, even though we got those stronger figures out of Canada earlier in the week. So we got a lot to go over here, guys. I do want to take, uh, as always, feel free to throw out any questions, specific pairs you want to review, strategy questions. Uh, just m drop them in the message board. Eileen, good morning to you. Uh, Joe, Josh, Mark, Mario, Pete, um, Saif, Sean. We got a whole crew here today, guys. So great to be with you. And as always, uh, feel free. Eileen says, march in like a lion. Yeah, so you're seeing what is being uh, interpreted from the media as one of the strongest opens to a month thus far. Of course, it's only the second day of trading, uh, but certainly we've seen some strength across the board. So yesterday, Dow closed out a really strong day, 384, uh, 348 excuse me, points to the upside. It's again about 2.11%. Uh, broader stock performance this morning, not really on tap with that. So if we take a quick look, here's what the equity board looks like. Um, Right now, uh, in Europe, mixed performance, you got the CAC 40 up 0.15%, DAX more importantly up 0.4%, FTSE slight decline of 0.3%, Asia PAC had a decent session, okay, if we look at the Nikkei up nearly 4, or more, exactly 4.11%, uh, you had the Hang Seng up 3%, Shanghai Composite up 4 plus percent, so you're seeing some of those gains that you saw in US trade yesterday translate over into Asia, and again, so far, you're looking at Europe kind of mixed on the session. U.S. equity futures heading into the open uh, don't look quite as rosy. you got the Dow Jones down 0, uh, 27 points, uh, S&P down 3.5 handles, and the NASDAQ with a loss of almost 4 handles here. So we'll have to see what the equity board looks like as we open up uh, the session. Uh, last night, also, just a quick recap, we did get some stronger than expected data out of Australia. GDP for the fourth quarter came in at 0.6%. Uh, that's a beat from the 0 0.4 we were looking at. Also, an upward revision both to the quarter-on-quarter -quarter and year-on-year -year prints previously as well. So real strong data over in Aussie overnight. Did charge a nice rally in the Aussie dollar. I know the swing side of trades, guys, we are still holding a short there. Aussie dollar is at resistance. Excuse me, our stop is just higher. So uh, we will take a look at that as well. All right, so that's a quick recap for what's going on as we head into the U.S. session. Let's jump into the charts. Here's what the dollar index looks like as we hold or as we head into the non-farm payroll print at the end of the at the end of the week. Here, near-term support hasn't changed. We're still looking at that confluence support down at 12,154. Um, the resistance still going to hold 12,204, which of course was last year's high day close. And key resistance, 12,234, that's a 764 retracement, but more importantly, lines up really nicely with that median line parallel. So the dollar index, guys, hasn't really been giving us much this week, okay? It's been a little bit more of a chop fest. Here's what it looks like on the 30-minute chart. 
And if we go to the update from Sunday, here's what the dollar index looked like on the 30 minute then. Okay, we were just around that 12,204, the high day close from last year, kind of starting the week muddling right there. All we've done is essentially reinforce that weekly opening range high. So you came down to support, which was right down here at 12,173. Remember, near-term support that we're looking at in the daily chart is still 12,154. You've seen it sit there as support. We came back to test the weekly opening range high, failed, and now reinforced a very clean opening range heading into the start of Wednesday trade. Now, Again, favoring a downside move here, but if we do get a break of this near-term support, your first and important target that you're going to want to take into account first is here, okay, that 154 level. That's going to be the sort of break zone that we need to clear to validate a break of this formation. Remember, we're in this ascending median line formation off the lows. That basic 50% retracement, which lines up very nicely with some of the swing highs that we put in uh, both in February. Uh, also coincides along that median line. So a break there is what's really needed to validate a more significant shift in trade. And then again, huge, huge region here at 12,131, the yearly open, 618 retracement of the advance, all lining up right in there. Or excuse me, this is a 618 extension. Uh, and the 200-day moving average, or excuse me, the 100-day moving average at 12,131. So you got clear-cut targets for the dollar index. Do like a downside break here. We'll see if we can clear out that near-term lower median line parallel. But until we do, if you do take any shorts here on the greenback, make sure that we're reserved as we come into this area of near-term support. All right, so we're going to designate this as our bullish invalidation level for the ascending structure here. So picture for the dollar index. Again, not surprised to see this kind of uh, price action. I know a lot of the trade setups we've been looking, guys, at the near term has been very lackluster to start off the month. Patience pays in this type of environment, okay? We're just opening up March trade. You have some event risk on tap at the end of the week with non-farm payrolls. So keep the powder dry. We'll continue to watch this key range here in the dollar index. And again, need that breaks up 12,154 to get the reversal. Any questions on the index before we move off? Levels unchanged from Sunday. Okay, so first things first, I do want to just take a quick jump into last night's update. I want to go over the uh, Aussie Yen. Most importantly, finally made that topside break of that key range we've been watching for over two weeks now. Uh, dollar Swiss still sitting tight. I think you get that break today. Here's what Aussie dollar, Aussie Yen rather, look like last night. So if you guys remember the daily chart, we've been following this trade for a multiple weeks now. The major key area of support, 79.39, uh, excuse me, 79.88 into the 8016 handle, 7988 being the low day close, the 50% retracement coming in at 8016. You've seen multiple defenses on that. Now, yesterday's reversal, outside day reversal, is really what called for us to start looking higher. Okay, take a step back here. Here's what it looked like on the 30 minute, and here's what Aussie N looked like on the daily. Okay, so this outside day reversal, typically a constructive candlestick formation. I don't put too much emphasis on these guys because I've seen outside day reversals do all kinds of wicked stuff, but why this is important is where it happened. So for example, you can see many instances where we have outside day reversals that don't prompt much movement. Here's an example of an outside day reversal to the upside. This candle, guys, happened at the highs though. So a bullish outside day reversal at resistance is not something we're going to want to pay attention to. A bullish outside day off of key support puts more emphasis on it. Okay, So the fact that yesterday's candle came all the way down to the low day close gave us a third tag and rejection of that level, taking the entire day's previous day's price action, encompassing in that closing higher in the session right at resistance alone, this gives us a bullish near-term uh, bias. Now, the break here that we made last night is really what's a little bit more of a significant development because now you've cleared a range that we've held for over two weeks. And remember, the longer we hold these ranges, the longer resistance and support is tested as such, the more significant, the more uh, meaningful the break will be. Now, you're not getting that run really extending here, and here's what it looks like. 
on the intraday chart. Oops, there it is. Okay, here's what it looks like on the intraday since yesterday. Keep in mind, the yen is having a lackluster day. It's down 0.26% versus the dollar. So you're seeing some yen weakness helping this up. The advance coming just shy of that key resistance level we noted yesterday at 82.80 into the 83 handle. So we're turning up uh, just four pips shy, excuse me, of that region. Momentum continued to give you some divergence, bearish divergence into these highs here as momentum continued to hold those highs uh, and the price pushed into fresh highs. A trigger break to the downside gave us a slight lean here heading into the U.S. Uh, futures open. And here we are setting up the weekly or the session, excuse me, opening range. So near term, you are looking at a possibility for a pullback here. You'd look for some support at that major resistance region that we've tested again for three weeks. That's right at the 82 handle, just below 81.96 into 81.87. All right. So long story short, you look for a pullback. You stay constructive near term above 82. I'll be looking for long triggers here. The bullish invalidation level that we not, that we cited yesterday, we're going to continue to watch that at 81.15. And 81.15, guys, is simply the weekly open. Okay. So even if this thing pulls back past 82. Not necessarily going to be looking to do anything in this range, but I'll be looking for long triggers again if we get into the weekly open. That being said, a break of the highs. We're looking for a soft target at 83.47, backed by that basic trend line resistance extending off the highs from December. So really clear levels here on the Aussie end. Um, and certainly if we do see the Aussie start to hold resistance versus the dollar and a pullback scenario might give us an opportunity, uh, again, to take a long position here on Aussie and keep in mind one thing, ultimately we are looking to sell a rally in Aussie end. Okay. The premise of the trade and why for the last three weeks we've been looking for long triggers is just because of the critical nature of the support. It is stacked up down here on the daily chart. And again, Topside pop through this would give us a nice little near-term recovery. Ultimately, like I said, we'd be looking to get short again ahead of 84. Any questions on Aussie Yen before we move off? Uh, question here, when you see price action sitting at support or resistance for a while and know it will break somewhere, do you take the trade if the RSI trigger on the way triggers one way or another, or better to always wait for the break of some kind to pull back. Often I see these breaks, I'm waiting, and the move doesn't then pull back much to get in, such as Aussie Yen or even the dollar index. Good question. Um, so the question is, uh, when you see price action sitting in support resistance for a while and know it's going to break somewhere, do you take the trade if the RSI triggers go one way or the other? Here's the thing, Eileen. It's the, Nothing's changed, okay? So the RSI triggers, yeah, if we're bullish, still looking for long triggers. And the only thing that matters is that we have a, a concerted stop and that we have the proper trigger. Um, from here, okay, I wouldn't be opposed, again, again, I've been doing this for a long time and kind of – you kind of got to build up a confidence for it, but uh, let me just bring this up here for an example for you. On a trade like this, I have no problem taking a, a, a short trigger or a short against the highs. If the proper, proper trigger lines up, which here it did, you have some divergence, price action making a higher high in the one minute, a lower high in the oscillator. Uh, the trigger wasn't quite early enough. On a break here, you got a spike again against the – yeah, you could have tried taking this against the uh, Asia pack high. Sure. Absolutely. Not much of a trigger here in the five-minute. Oh, maybe spoke too soon. Yeah, pretty messy triggers on both sides, but the point being, I have no problem taking that, Eileen. It's just that this way, you're going to be – lowering your leverage, right? We're going to be trading at half leverage, a quarter leverage, because this is a near-term counter trend trade-off resistance. Uh, chasing breaks have always seemed more risky, but maybe there is a market condition that warrant chasing them or not. Oh, okay, Eileen. So you're talking about once the break happens, um, do I sit there and chase it and jump in or do I wait for the pullback? If you don't get the pullback, we don't take the trade. Very, very, very simple. Guys, morally, I cannot <laughs> ethically um, – you know, 
advocate for trying to play a breakout like this on buying because you are essentially just massacring your risk to reward ratio. Uh, even if you caught this on a decent side of the break, let's say just as it broke above 82, your stop still needs to be ab below 81.50 and you're looking for 40 pips. So right off the bat, your stop is bigger than your, than your target. You can't do anything about it. Now on this, Eileen, I do need to be fair. This was on the release of the data yesterday. Okay, so again, on these data releases, if you got quick fingers and you're a, a gutsy guy, I got no problems with it. Uh, but it's always best to kind of sit out. If the market gives you the break and you missed it, we'll look for more opportunities. The market will always offer more opportunities. Uh, I can never really advocate that we chase these positions, Eileen. Does that make sense? Saying, yep, stop, stop, stop. Yeah, it's all about your risk to reward. On every trade you take, risk management is paramount. So that's all I'm going to say on the breakouts. I know it can be tricky. I know it can be frustrating, especially if you're looking for the long side and you get the break and you miss it. Yeah, it sucks. No one likes to see that. But at the end of the day, we have to be prudent and we have to be disciplined. Make sense? Okay, I got you right on top. Cheers, Eileen. Great questions. Great questions. Um, so that's Aussie Yen, guys. Again, uh, I'm be looking for a pullback here. The, bear, the bullish invalidation level is the weekly open. Um, I'll be watching yen price action very closely here because I do think that the Aussie does inevitably turn around. That's coming into resistance. So I don't want to extrapolate my Aussie bias versus the dollar across the board. But certainly if the Aussie does turn back near term, I'd be looking for a pullback here in Aussie yen. Questions? Again, a pretty decent pair as far as it represents the uh, broader risk trade and Certainly going into the end of the week, you do have that data out of the United States. You got durable goods orders tomorrow morning. Um, we'll be looking for some of those releases to prompt some price action here in Aussie Yen. All right, next up on tap from uh, Aussie Yen from last night. If there are no other questions, we'll move on to the dollar Swiss. And this is one that I'm a little bit more interested in. Uh, you might have seen me highlight this last night on or uh, yesterday on Daily FX as well. Look, the basic premise of the trade is right here. You're testing resistance, clear cut and simple. The weekly opening range, we talked about this at length uh, in yesterday's webinar, guys. The weekly opening range high comes in at a major, major support confluence. The yearly open, 618 retracement of the 2016 range. You had former support turned resistance and current operative median line resistance all confluenced right there into that 10030, 10029 level, 28. So the pullback gave you the opening range low for the week at the 100-day moving average, and we're continuing to consolidate in this tight, tight range. Okay, we'll be looking for the breakout. The bearish invalidation is up here at 10062. I'm going to also extend that range to 10072, which is the high that you made here on the 4th. Here's what it looks like on the 30-minute. Okay, so real clean um, from last night, again, you know, we're just continuing to consolidate into the apex here of this near-term consolidation. A top side break, you're looking for that rally into 10028, opening range high. We'll be looking for short triggers here. If we don't get any and we extend higher, this is the, bull, uh, the bearish invalidation level. So again, if we break higher, I'll be looking for short triggers here. If we don't get it, we'll flip that bias looking for a move higher ideal scenario or the base case scenario is that you get maybe a rip into the weekly opening range and then a reversal or even a rip into 10070, then a reversal lower. Uh, the momentum signature I do need to prompt is still benign here since the beginning of the week. You start off a little bit more of a constructive approach. Since then, support at 40, resistance at 60, support ahead of 40, resistance ahead of 60. Okay, so since the open of the week, momentum sig signature has gone completely neutral. And we'll be looking uh, for a break above 60 or a break below 40 to give us some conviction. Again, favoring a move higher to sell in dollar Swiss. Let's just see if there's anything near term. I was looking at this earlier this morning, and it was just a mess. It was all over the place. And that still seems to be the case. <laughs> so we're not going to do anything here just yet. Remember, it's a, it's a much tighter ATR, guys. You're only work, working for about 25 pips uh, per scalp. So um, when the range continues to consolidate here and you got a, a 10, 15 pip back and forth, it's a little bit better off for us to sit away. Let us get the, the, a little bit more of a decisive break here before starting to move on it. But holding that upper median line parallel so far, so good. 
Questions on dollar Swiss. Look for that move into the opening range high slash 10070 for short triggers uh, to get that move lower. Again, our bullish invalid, our bearish invalidation level, excuse me, is right here. A break lower, you've got a lot of support there besides just the 100-day moving average, okay? A basic 236 of the advance off the lows and those final swing highs on Thursday and Wednesday of last week before we broke all coincide right here. And this is the objective weekly opening range low. So either way you slice it, a break below 99.50 opens up targets down at 98.92, 98.50, and the key 618 retracement at the 98 handle. Any questions on Swissy before we move off? Uh, I'm not really going to be paying much attention to the Swissy data, so we'll be watching U.S. data here for this pair for possible event risk trades. All right. Recap of some of the trades that we've been following. Uh, Aussie Swiss, the OR, also broke uh, recently. Here's what the Aussie Swiss looks like. We've been following this trade uh, as well from the previous sessions. Here's what Aussie Swiss looked like earlier in the week. We had set the opening range at 71.66 high. You had support right at the 618 retracement, which opened up the weekly low. And you're looking for a break of this range. This trend line support inevitably did end up holding. You saw a test yesterday when we were in the webinar, we were testing the opening range high for the week again and pulled off. Inevitably, later on, we finally broke the upside. Here's what Aussie Swiss looks like on the near term. Okay, so you saw that top side break. Initial targets or initial soft target was just at that 72 figure. Resistance and key resistance near term is still 72.30 into 72.42. It's exactly where we capped off last night pulled off a little bit. So where do we go from here? This is a major resistance that I want to be mindful of. I'm going to zoom out real quick just to show you that we are also challenging basic trend line resistance. Extending off the highs here. Okay. Came back, tested as support, rebounded off. And now the focus range heading into the U.S. trade session is either a move back below the 72 handle or breach back above 72.42 to keep the upside bias going. Remember on the daily chart, pretty big region, pretty big region. Yearly open comes in, uh, excuse me, the monthly open comes in at 72.30 for February. Towards the tail end of February, that's exactly where you capped off. Here we are yet again testing it as resistance. So for Aussie Swiss, looking at this resistance, looking to find a hole, a hold rather, and looking for short exposure off this level. Again, that would coincide very nicely with our dollar Swiss outlook. Uh, if dollar Swiss makes another run just to the upside to give us a short trigger um, and a move lower, it would certainly reinforce that broader Swissy strength that we're looking for. A little bit of a wider ATR, 31 pips is what we're looking at per scalp here. Again, we're going to raise near term the bullish invalidation level at this point. We're going to go ahead and mark that up to the uh, 71.23 level. That is a nice confluence region. The 50% retracement just off the advance uh, from that low you made in the 19th, but it's also an exact 236 from the lows. So either way you look at it, uh, we're going to reserve that line near term as our bullish invalidation level. Also keep in mind that this is the 50 line for the current operative structure we're working with and coincides on that heading to the close of today in New York. Any questions on Aussie Swiss? Let's see if we got anything interesting here on the near-term charts. Okay, so this is a trigger I was looking at earlier today uh, to the downside. That's on that subsequent rally and test. Uh, the reason I was really interested in this trigger is because, again, your stop, 72.30 as you came to this high. Even if you got 72.25, uh, your stop is at 72.36. Really tight stops. And these are the scalps that we want to get most involved in, guys. A rally, trigger, your stop is able to be put in 10, 15 pips. That's like your ideal play. If you get stopped out, no harm, no foul, 15 pips, move right on, next trade. Um, if it plays out, again, you're looking for that 31 pip stretch to the downside.
Okay, that is Aussie Swiss. We are flying through these today. All right, Euro Oz, we got a downside break. Uh, Aussie dollar, we are looking for weakness. I want to look at that as well. And then we'll take a look at some of the dollar crosses um, again. So real quick, here's what the Euro Oz looks like. Also another trade that we've been following here for a couple of days. Um, if you remember early in the week, we were sitting at this major key support. Last week, we highlighted this support looking for the upside scalps. You never really got past that median line. Even at the start of this week, again yesterday, I was looking for a possible break above this median line for a rally towards this confluence region here, where once again, we'd start looking for the short side. End of the day, yesterday's break and close below key support shifts the focus lower. Key support, by the way, 105.20, absolutely paramount. Uh, again, just to bore you one more time, I know you've heard this a couple of days in the webinars, but the 200-day moving average, you're sliding parallel off the lows, former upper median line parallel, all coincide right there. We broke that yesterday. Here's what your odds looks like on the 30-minute. So your weekly opening range, rebound, break, Kind of messed around there yesterday a little bit, but here was the close below, tested it in overnight trade, reject, and moved lower. The 618 retracement of the advance is 5074, okay? So we've broken below that near term and now tested it as resistance. So the focus heading into the U.S. session is going to be 5080 resistance, and the soft trigger, which we just missed, uh, was 4966. Uh, the lows came in at 40, what's that low there? Uh, 49.85, looking for a break of this range near term to validate a top side break. You'd look for a little bit more of a recovery towards 51.80. A downside break, you'd look for that drop towards the key 764 retracement. That's down at 47.96, basically looking at the 48 handle. Uh, Aussie Swiss, would you have taken the long trigger a bit ago too? I missed that one, uh, Eileen, so let me go back to that for you real quick. Um, which long trigger are you talking about? There was a couple on this. So you had something like this in the wee morning hours uh, after the open of, of uh, European trade. And it actually also showed up pretty clearly on the one-minute chart here. Again, lower low, lower low, lower low, higher low. Even if it holds that low in momentum, it's still divergence as the extreme in price is not reflected in the oscillator. That's all we're looking for. Forget this notion I need a higher low and a lower high and that necessarily like that. It doesn't always play like that. As long as the oscillator is not confirming a new extreme in price, that suggests divergence and waning momentum. So on a trade like this, absolutely. Um, the only thing I would tell you on something like this, Eileen, is if we did take this trade, um, I would say one thing. Uh, you're running into resistance. So let's just take a step back real quick. So, oops, sorry. So this is the resistance level we're looking to play, right? The pullback here, yeah, you had that former trend line resistance, now support. Um, you're coming towards the range lows uh, for the session. Sure, on a trigger like this, yeah, I'd be more than happy to kind of wait for that trigger break to the upside, take a real tight stop against the lows. But on a scalp like this, you just want to be mindful that you're not always going to get the full extension range. Okay, especially when the market's made a move like this. For me to take a long after an exhaustion blow off like this, um, I have taken positions like this, Eileen, before, but super nimble. Okay, so it's all about being nimble on these types of stretches where you're just kind of trying to play another rebound or another test of the near-term resistance you just ran into. Um, at this point, I'd be more interested in trying to see if we can get a short exposure against that high. Again, only looking for 31 pips and recognizing that we are still in the upward slope off the lows. So recognizing where we are in trend, recognizing where we are in the structure of the advance, absolutely critical. Um, I'm all about, you know, you can take counter trend trades. We can we can definitely try to scalp little positions against a major resistance rebound. You just want to be a little bit more nimble. And like I said earlier, and I'm going to keep implanting this, guys. You're never going to stop me from saying it. Risk management is paramount. As long as you can get a stop ahead of 31 pips um, and you're leaving yourself room for a 31 pips stretch, 
Uh, I got no problem with it. Aline says, oh, okay, can't get much move when heading into the resistance right there. Exactly. So you see what I'm saying? Um, I, I, Again, if you're going to be super nimble and you're going to take a scalp like that and you're looking for you know, a 15, 20 pip stop, you're not going to necessarily look for 31 pips, but you're looking for that 15, 20 pip rally, sure. Um, you could definitely squeeze trades out like that. I've been, like I said to you earlier in the week, I've been known uh, on days when the, the market is just completely turned over in one of the major pairs for me to be counter trend trading. Uh, but we're always going to be in our best – it's always going to be our best interest to kind of stick with the broader move for the day. Okay. Um, so I hope that answers your question on that. Uh, Joe says, can never hear it enough, Mike. Repetition is great. Cheers, Joe. And that's my goal, man. I'd love – you know, nothing more important to me than see you guys uh, succeed and do well. And implanting these really important sort of concepts in our mind I think is paramount because these are mistakes that we've all made before. It just seemed that the Aussie data so strong it might break resistance, and the broader and the broader move was long. So certainly, Eileen, let's go ahead and jump into the Aussie dollar. Certainly, Eileen, the, the data has was very strong last night, hundred percent. But remember what we always say with regards to event risk: these data prints very rarely have the propensity to change trend. They can trigger near-term reversals. They can trigger near-term recoveries against the broader trend. But very rarely is a singular economic data print going to shift trend. Okay, So if anything, I'm seeing it as that release last night charged a rally into resistance. That's it. That's it. Nothing's changed my broader view, right? What would change my broader view? The technical play here, guys. And that's what our focus is here, and it's what the focus will always be because the fundamentals are something that uh, are going to change on a day-to-day -day basis. The fundamentals are something that being interpreted, and anything that you think that the market doesn't know, guys, is just fiction. Okay. So if the market comes out stronger than expected or the data print comes out weaker than expected, everyone's looking at the same thing. There's nothing that you know that the market doesn't. So for me to try to plan a trade against that, just to, in our minds, in the way that me and Jamie trade, in the way that we've been – um, over the years, the way we've developed our strategy, it's just not something that's been very, very conducive to us. So for us, it's all about what the technical play is saying. And yes, that data yesterday was strong. Did it deserve a rally for the Euro, for the Aussie? Absolutely. Stronger than expected GDP across the board, both on the year-on-year -year and the quarter-on-quarter. -quarter. And the upward revision to the previous months certainly puts us on path for a stronger Aussie. The other thing that you want to note is just a day earlier, what did the RBA say? Well, they said inflation is likely to stay low for one or two years. Uh, they said that um, you know the Aussie dollar, the moves that we're seeing in the Aussie dollar is reflecting the improvements that we're seeing in the economy. At the same respect, what they say, if inflation remains persistently low, leave scope for more easing. Well, as we continue to see the GDP and broader growth domestically heat up, those concerns will start to quail. And as that happens, you start to see some near-term market reactions give us some lift for the Aussie. At the end of the day, what are we doing, Eileen? We're just checking the monthly highs. Uh, we did see a break of the weekly opening range, so I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing come back into support, make another push into the high towards the end of the week. But we're looking largely for a turn in price ahead of that 72.70, 72.65 barrier. Again, just to highlight what this is, this is the 1618 extension from the advance off the lows there, 7270, which we've kind of just continued to miss. But it's also a confluence region with the 786 retracement from the decline off the highs. Now, let me see if I bring this to a 764, if we got the touch. Bear with me one moment. Ah, okay. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and open this up, change that. Confluence region of support there or re resistance there. Use near term resistance 7252. A break there looks for that 7270 level, and that's what's going to be sort of the breakout zone for me. If we clear here, no longer looking for a turn in momentum, you'd be looking essentially to buy pullbacks for a stretch into the December opening range high 7360 and that 7380 level. This is the contingency. Our base case scenario is that you see one more stretch and you start to look for short triggers higher up. All right. Uh, you're spent on Aussie data for the rest of the week, so you have to be looking at U.S. data prints with tomorrow's durable goods orders and Friday's non-farm payroll report here for the Aussie. 
Uh, Mario says, now that we're talking about the Aussie dollar, can you comment on Aussie Kiwi as the Kiwi is still moving within its weekly opening range? 100%, Mario. You're absolutely right. Um, I've been completely neglecting the Kiwi just because I didn't like the way we opened the week. Um, I personally don't like to see these sort of slow mutter higher to open the week. You're absolutely right. This is where we opened. You gap lower. You came here, filled, tested the opening range high for the week, failed miserably here on this stretch yesterday to break above that 200-day moving average and completely collapsed back below, keeping us essentially in the weekly opening range. Um, I don't have any business here on, on Kiwi Dollar. And we'll look at Aussie Kiwi in a moment, Mario. But for me, I got no business trading with this right now. Uh, we continue to straddle this 200. It's not been support or clear-cut resistance. We've kind of just been pivoting off it and straddling it. 25 pip ATR does give us some juice, but at the end of the day, uh, it's just too tight. And on the daily chart, if I'm not comfortable with where we are trading on the daily chart, I'm not comfortable with the trade period. Um, now, I can tell you this. Just take a, take a step back. As we were talking about Aussie yen earlier in the session, we were talking about that outside day reversal we made off of major key support. Remember the low day close? Here's the exact opposite. Big, big, big outside day reversal on Friday off of resistance, and not only resistance, confluence resistance, former lower median line parallel, 1618 extension off the lows, and a 764 retracement off the highs. So this certainly shifted the bias to the downside as we closed out last week. So for me, this week, I'm just kind of looking for a mutter higher here to kind of try to get short again. Um, and we're not at resistance, we're not at support, we're right mid-range of the range that we've been holding essentially for the last four weeks. So I want to see this travel to one of the extremes here to be able to offer any type of scenario play on the Kiwi. If we look again on the on the daily chart, momentum has gone completely benign and neutral here as well, kind of just straddling and sitting at that 50 line. From a price action standpoint, I do like the short side. From where we are in price, I don't personally see um, any major opportunities here that are kind of just staring at me. So we'll continue to watch that Kiwi dollar and hopefully we'll get a little bit more conviction as we move towards the end of the week and towards the opening range of the um, month. But here's what it looks like on the 30-minute chart. And this line, at this point, we can go ahead and negate. It hasn't offered us much play. Okay. And a basic 50, the entire advance didn't even get tagged. Just shy of. Comes in at, at uh, 65.60, essentially. Uh, that's no longer needed. Let's go ahead and just stretch that to the lows that we made on that stretch from last week's highs. Not bad. This 38.2 retracement off the high. You got that 200-day moving average key right there. Near-term resistance and the opening range high. Again, I wouldn't be surprised to see a stretch higher and then a move lower uh, for Kiwi. Broadly speaking, like I said, on the back of that move that we saw in the end of the last week, I am looking lower. Uh, the momentum indicator, like I said, also kind of benign here. Okay, I don't want to mind the gap per se, but 60 hold, 40 hold. We just rebounded off 40 again. Uh, look for a change there. So what does that mean, my friend Mary, for the Aussie Kiwi at the end of the day? Here's what Aussie Kiwi looks like. Okay. So we just cleared the opening range for Aussie Kiwi uh, for the week to the upside, obviously. Uh, we're at resistance right now. And I just wanted to highlight this region right here. You're basically looking at the July low day close uh, from last year. You saw some major, major pivots here. This is a basic 236 retracement. This goes all the way back to the decline off of the highs that you made in 2011. All the way to the lows, a basic 236 takes into 109.10. Okay, and again, over the last couple of years, just looking at the pivots we've got at that region certainly gives us room for a pause near term that we are at near term resistance. It's funny. Because guess what else is that resistance? Aussie dollar. So 
broadly looking for a halt or a cap to some of the Aussie advances that we got on the back of last night's GDP number. Um, again, 200-day moving average is in there as well. You got a lot here uh, for the Aussie key. Now, if we look at this from a 30-minute chart, if we just take a look away from the daily and we say objectively what happened here, yes, we set a weekly opening range. We broke the weekly opening range high. We should be looking for that Thursday-Friday stretch high. So I'm not going to put it outside the realm of possibility for this thing to continue a little bit higher. I am looking for, inevitably, uh, a rally to sell. Okay, you got a lot of stuff stacked up here into 109.70, 109.60. Uh, but at the end of the day, just keep that daily chart in view. Big, 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 big region. Big region. That 70, 60 level that we were looking at on the, on the intraday chart are the highs that we made here. Okay, so it's just simply the yearly opening range high. And if the yearly opening range high breaks, well, then you're now you're now you're talking about 11067. Uh, you're talking about longer data trend line resistance off the 2011 highs, and certainly would give us a much more concerted upside uh, bias. As it stands right now, testing resistance, testing resistance. Mario, does that help? Does that make does that make sense, man? He says, uh, cool, very detailed explanation. All right, cheers, mate. Yeah, let me know if you have any specific questions on it. Thanks for bringing that up. I obviously, with all honesty, I haven't been watching Aussie Kiwi very much just because of my discontent for the Kiwi near term here. So I'll tend just to leave them out of the crosses. But um, uh, very, very, very convincing move here into resistance. And again, this is going to be the invalidation level for the short bias. If we do see a topside break, and I'm going to bring your attention again to that same slope that we were talking about last year at nauseum. This is the basic trend line support extending off the January low. We take this slope. It's defined so many highs, so many turns in price, so many inflection points and pivots. Here's the break that we just made. The next uh, slope line of that, of that gradient, if we break here, it takes us all the way up into that 618 and even higher, 110.90. So... Certainly, it's make or break here, and on a break of the objective yearly opening range, I think you get a validation here. Uh, that being said, I'd be looking for near-term resistance and looking for short triggers at this region. Uh, one thing here, guys, again, just looking at it for, with a fresh pair of eyes here for the first uh, time this week, look at this. Here's your 2016 open. I mean, we don't get opening ranges for the year that are quite this clean. Um very often. So when they do happen, I definitely want to know about it. Here's your January open, January low, January high. Here's your February low. February high was at the same high. Here's the open of March. Okay, so the yearly opening range is super well defined here. And again, it's going to be a major, major level that we'll want to be paying attention to uh, as we get towards the end of the week. Aussie key at resistance. I like it. Uh, Aussie Key answers that question too about main trend. Need to wait to see if that breaks the resistance and same with Aussie Dollar. Yeah, Eileen, I'm with you on that. Well put. Well put. I guess I'm just seeing the downside more than up for the Aussie. Well, it's at resistance, Eileen, so I'm not completely against that notion. It's at resistance on a couple of different crosses. Absolutely. Uh, Joe says, the daily chart on Kiwi Dollar, is that considered coiling? I heard Jamie mention this term. Let's take a look. Kiwi dollar daily. Oh, yeah, I would say so. Absolutely. So what, what that term means, Joe, just a quick uh, breakdown, is when something's coiling up, essentially it's either range bound or the range is contractionary. So you, you make a high, you make a low. The high, next time we test it, fails just ahead of the highs. The lows, the next time we test it, will fail just ahead of the lows, and you'll see a contractionary range. Uh, and when these coils happen, typically the breakout is much more decisive and much more easily identifiable. And that's what the key is here on these coil breaks. Uh, speaking of coil breaks, take a quick segue here into gold. Still coiling up, guys. Remember, 10% off from the apex is typically where you see these break out. The near-term chart we've been following since earlier in the week. Okay. This is what we looked like yesterday in the webinar. We were talking about looking for short exposure off the high day close. We got it. Um, and that rejection at 60 on the two-hour chart continued to suggest look lower. Here we are on the move lower. This is your ideal or this is your uh, perfect example, as it were, Joe, 
uh, for what a coiling trade looks like. It's not always going to be in a triangle formation. It could be a flat. It could be something a little bit more dynamic. But largely speaking, it's a range-bound price action that continues to retest and reassert a specific median line or a specific trend line. And once we get a clearing of this range, um, you know, we'll look to play it. Uh, as a disclaimer, as I said yesterday, typically triangle formations of this sort are continuation patterns. So on the broader daily chart, that would suggest a topside break. Uh, that being said, play inside the range from a scalping standpoint. If you're looking for a more medium, long-term, or breakout type of trade, you really do need to see what direction this breaks down in, or breaks out in, rather. Um, top side break of the high day close at 1246. Looks for a stretch into the yearly high. I wouldn't look any higher than that yet, and that's not just because that's the yearly high. It's also because that yearly high coincides with that trend line extending off the highs that we made back in 2014. What was that swing high? Uh, back in May of 2013, excuse me, even even longer. So this slope is the same slope for this trend line, which obviously has offered some really nice pivots in price. Okay, so even if we do get the top side break, guys, watch the yearly high as it coincides with that trend line now. And a break there, you're looking at the high week close for last year. That's 1293. The high day close comes in at 1301. So just an example of uh, you know, a coiling trade that we'll continue to watch here as gold continues to consolidate off the yearly and monthly highs. Joe, make sense on the concept of coiling? Yeah, and I, and I would have to agree with Jamie largely that it is coiling for, for the Kiwi dollar, but for the daily chart, um, this rejection here, like I said last week, it's pretty meaningful. It's pretty meaningful. And not only is it meaningful because of where the outside day reversal happened, i.e. at resistance, but also the fact that that outside day single outside day reversal not only reversed off resistance, but also closed and moved, pivoted right below that 200-day moving average. If you guys recall, when we broke here earlier last month on the upside and we tested that basic trend line resistance, do you remember that the um, – the statistic that we pulled out on the Kiwi, the last four out of four attempts, this is what we said last month, the last four out of four attempts to break above the 200-day moving average has been met by a mean reversion trade the following day to close below. Guys, this is five out of five now. Here's the break above. Next session, even though we stretched way higher, closed back below. So you're now looking at a phenomenon where one, two, three, four, five out of the last five times we've probed through the 200-day moving average, the next day has seen a mean reversion trade take us right back below. And that goes to tell you towards the broader trend uh, that the market is following for the trade. So broadly speaking, like I said, I'm still you know, looking for this coil, this consolidation to inevitably break to the downside. I wouldn't put it past this thing again to make a run at the highs here. Um, well, not the highs, rather, but a run through that 200-day moving average. At the end of the day, you know, I'll look for a little bit more conviction, a little trade a position either against major resistance or against major support, but sitting mid-range here, not something I'm really interested in yet. All right. Great discussion. Great questions here today, guys. Loving it. All right, um, let's take a look at the, did we look at the Aussie dollar guys already? Yeah, I think we talked about this. Uh, 72.28, again, it's a 6.8 extension off the advance from the lows, but it's also the median lines that we're working here, okay? Uh, the broader median line structure off the lows from September, you got a sliding parallel. If you take that same slope off that late September low, it's been also been offering some nice pivots. That takes us right into this region of resistance. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, right here at the key 618 extension. Uh, Joe says, thanks, perfect sense. Right on, my man. Cheers on that. Uh, makes sense. So helpful with your details. Eileen says, I appreciate that as well. Um, What else is on the list? Euro dollar and Kiwi CAD real quick. We are running low on time, so let me jump through these. Euro dollar, I don't really have much to say. You guys know exactly what I'm thinking about. Nothing's changed. Uh, we were straddling the yearly open, the 764 retracement, last ditch effort. 
uh, for a hold here on this complete round trip that we made in February. I mean, this thing, <laughs> the monthly candle, guys, looks hideous. Um, here's what the monthly candle looks like. That's that's not something that you're going to want to really get aggressive on. Uh, but certainly for the euro on that move, it puts us in pause here as far as trying to play the rebound that we were looking for. And at the end of the day, it's really the close that matters. So for me, am I looking for a short euro exposure here? Not quite just yet. Remember, the weekly opening range low was here that we made yesterday. What did we do yesterday? We came back and closed right back again at that region. So... Um, you know, this is such a critical area near term for the euro dollar. If we break below the February range lows, okay, and that's basically looking for a low of 108.13, uh, that would validate a little bit more of a concrete reversal for the euro off of the upper median line parallel. Remember, we reworked, re we reworked these levels yesterday um, with the slope. I went, with, I went over that with you guys in the webinar. And certainly, I think it's a much more well-defining pattern. So certainly, if we break below uh, the range lows for February, we'd look to continue uh, on the broader downtrend in the euro. Also, remember one thing and why I don't want to necessarily jump into a short, okay, or even try to scalp this to the short side now, is this. Um, momentum is heading into 60, or 40, rather. It's heading into 40 support. So I want to see if this momentum oscillator does finally dip into that 40 region. Uh, if it does, it'll sort of validate the break above 60 here. This was the first break above 60 that we've seen in nearly six months. Okay, so if this break above 60 finds support at 40, it would suggest that there's still more juice to the upside. Okay, if we push below the February lows and momentum closes the session sub 40, that's all the validation I would need. Um, and we would take a much more aggressive stance to sell rallies in the euro dollar. Here's what it looks like on the intraday charts. Okay, um, and no change to any of the levels that we highlighted on Sunday. Everything stays pat, nothing's changed. Just to give you kind of a picture of where we are at this point, there was those key levels 764 retracement, the yearly open. Uh, here's the 618 retracement. This is a near-term last-ditch effort. We talked about that yesterday, 45. We're pushing through it now. Okay, we're pushing through it now. The momentum signature does remain bearish since the start of the week. Sub 40, turn ahead of 60, turn ahead of 60, struggling to even get above 50. And if we do see another dip here below 40, keeps the focus lower. Keeps the focus lower. Um, and that's why our strategy, guys, on the near term, really, it's more reactive. We need to see price and momentum shift before we start fighting this. Um, I was all about trying to play a rebound to the upside here, but you just didn't get any conviction long triggers. just didn't happen. So I think we need to be a little bit more patient. I'm not putting this, ruling this out yet, um, you know, as a hold here, guys. Okay, I think... Uh, or as a, as a break to the downside, rather. I think we might still be able to hold. I'll see what the U.S. opening range looks like, but I'll give you guys an update if anything changes on the euro. Uh, it wasn't highlighted yesterday just because of where we are exactly. So uh, a break above 109.66, 10, excuse me, 108, uh, 108.66, 108.72 uh, is what I would need to see uh, for any type of long exposure to be back on the table here near term. All right. Hey, Aurelian, sorry, late. Did you cover and pick uh, for – did you cover your pick for the year, you're saying? Sorry about that. Uh, on Aussie Yen, says Aurelian, great to see you in the room. Yeah, uh, Aussie Yen went over at the very first onset of the of the webinar uh, at length, Aurelian. So I'm going to let you watch the um, the archive for that. I'll have it posted as soon as we're done here. Uh, Joe says, tell Eileen, I said thanks. She helps me learn more with the great questions that she asks. So Eileen, you got some fans here in the room as well. Uh, Dave says, this week is the M1 and tight stops until NFPs, watching the paint drive. And Dave, such is the game of trading, my friend. Sometimes we just got to sit on our hands. And, uh, you know, let me take that back. It's not a game, right? We have to wait for the market to give us what we're looking for, for us to have the conviction to jump into this position um, from a near-term trader no one hurts more than me, Dave, to sit on your hands. Trust me. For a guy like me to not have any trades and kind of say pat is... Uh, you know, the equivalent of shoving bamboo sticks under my fingernails. So I hear you and I'm with you on the frustration, uh, but we need to remain disciplined. And again, it's so early in the month. I think we'll get a lot of plays here once we clear some of these ranges. Uh, Aurelian, you're more than welcome, sir. I'll have that posted for you as soon as possible. 
Um, we will go ahead and wrap it up here, guys, if there are no other questions. Watch that gold trade. A real quick just touch note on uh, crude. Um, uh, it's kind of been under the radar this week. There's not been a lot of talk on it as we continue just to kind of straddle the 618 retracement, which has been offering some near-term support here at 3366. Look, the major area of resistance that I'm looking for now is here. We talked about this last week as a basic 382 retracement from the decline off the October high, but it also coincides really nicely with the upper or the median line rather of the ascent off the lows and the upper median line parallel for the current operative structure off the descent from that September October high. So you got clear cut levels of conviction resistance for crude. Uh, if we do make it back below that 618, we'd be looking for a possible rebound and another inflection off that lower median line parallel. Uh, but key range here to open up the month uh, for crude and certainly will have implications for some of the uh, CAD positions that we are also following. Uh, one last touch. I promise this is the last one. I have it on my notes here. I just noticed. Uh, Kiwi CAD, this is a trade that we were following on Sunday as well. Here's what the daily chart looks like. Look, this thing is also flirting with a disastrous break of near-term support. Uh, we were looking for the rebound to play a little bit more of a conviction rebound here. The broader bias remains bearish sub 90.40. Here's what Kiwi CAD looks like on the near-term charts. All right? Now, one thing I want to note on this, we are looking for the rebound to sell to break to the downside, and certainly we are looking for a broader downside play here. At the end of the day, uh, the only thing I wanted to note is you're getting some radical divergence on that new low we just made. Okay, Even the low that we made earlier in the session just this week didn't register a low quite that low on this dip that we made for this drop off uh, into oblivion kind of. It seemed it was going last night. So I just wanted to highlight this, guys. Um, at this point, Yes, it looks like yesterday this did look like it was testing a break of the weekly opening range low. But now that we've recovered and we're right back in this range, I really want to stress support at 88.40, 88.30, 88.30, of course, being the reversal day close. This is the major support we need to get through to validate the continuation of the short buys. Until we do, just use some caution. Uh, I didn't highlight this yesterday because I kind of just want to sit on the sidelines. Now that we've made a break of the weekly opening range and failed, I do think you risk a, a more concerted push higher here towards uh, the opening range high, the 50 line, uh, before reversing back to the downside. And certainly nothing's changed. Our broader bias remains weighted to the downside. But as opposed to trying to play the downside break we were looking at earlier in the week, now that we've made this divergence, now that we've made a stretch and a pretty mean reversion recovery off that low, I am thinking that you could possibly see a rebound towards the 50 line, if not the bearish invalidation level before continuing lower. OK, and key support is still 88.30, 88.40. All right. So um, real clear, beautiful levels here. And I just want to kind of point that out for you before we wrap things up. All right. So uh, for everyone in the room, don't forget 1 p.m. today, my man Jamie Setley is going to be on the mic for his midweek strategy webinar to cover some of the swing trades that we're following on some of the outlook for the trades that we'll be looking for into the open of March trade. Again, non-farm pay payrolls is on Friday. Uh, we'll give you an update. We'll be right back here tomorrow morning for another intraday strategy webinar at 8.30 Eastern. Until then, best of luck trading, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Joe says, thanks, Mike. True professional. I appreciate that, Joe. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Aurelian, same to you, my man. Uh, I appreciate all the comments, guys. See you then. Cheers.